Reshade. You might have heard of it. You might be thinking about using it. If you're anything like me, you might have spent hours overthinking it. This tutorial is for my fellow ruminators, who can and will chew on the what-ifs and wonder about the whys until the cows come home. In this video, I'll walk you through installing and using Reshade for Skyrim Special Edition, and use my current setup as an example for how one might tinker with a preset. Let's get started. First, why might one consider installing Reshade? Well, if you're like me and plan to record your gameplay with something like Fraps, which is a performance hog on its own, you might want something a bit lighter weight than an ENB to make your game look a certain way. While ENB is generally better at depth of field and ambient occlusion, Reshade is better at color grading, and is much more intuitive in terms of plugging in effects. It is still possible to bog down your game with Reshade effects, so this is one program where less really is more. You can also run Reshade alongside an ENB if you're feeling spicy, but expect to lose about as many frames as you would just running an ENB. You can also make and save presets in-game with Reshade if you want to tinker around with effects that you might want to save later. For instance, if you want to design a dreamlike version of the world for... any number of reasons. Oh, and another perk. Vampire Night Vision works with Reshade. It can be a little spotty with ENB, though there are fixes for it. Now for the installation, and yes, it really is this easy. Go to reshade.me, scroll to the bottom of the screen, read along the way if you're curious, and click download. Run the EXE, select your game, in this case Skyrim Special Edition, select Direct 3D 10 or higher, install all the things. Yes, really, install all the things. It sounds like a lot, but it doesn't take long at all. The reason we install all the things is so that we know for sure that whatever preset we pick out later has the resources it needs to function. It also gives us more options for tinkering down the line, which I'll get to in a bit. Don't worry, it won't be running all of this in the background and bogging things down. The preset will only use what it needs, unless you add in more. Speaking of presets, installation is now done, and we can get on with picking one. In my case, I've chosen the Da Vinci Reshade preset by Mason. Luckily, this kind author has provided installation instructions in the mod description, which is good because there's an any tweak to be done with this preset. Pro tip, always read mod descriptions. Sometimes they contain useful information. Once you've followed the instructions on your reshade preset of choice, I get into the weeds there, but your mileage may vary, so it's kind of moot. Go in game and hit the home key to bring up the reshade menu. You can go through the tutorial if you like. When you're done or have hit skip tutorial, select your preset from the drop down menu. And that's it! You can use presets out of the box if you don't want to do a whole lot of tinkering, in which case go ahead and hit performance mode to button it all up. Now if you're like me and you do want to mess around with the preset or other settings, you'll want to untick performance mode and load all effects. I'd also recommend duplicating the preset and naming it something recognizable, just so that you can go back in and restore stuff if you take science too far. You may or may not also want to take notes about what you muck around with so that you can reference them later. Remember kids, the only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down. If you have any familiarity with Photoshop or GIMP, then some of these effects might look pretty similar. They work in pretty much the same way too, and just like with Photoshop, less is more when you're working with effects. If you're not familiar with Photoshop, GIMP, or other such programs, let me show you how I've adjusted the basic Da Vinci preset to suit my purposes. My goal here was to make the screen space more readable after both render and YouTube compression, both of which tend to darken the image significantly. This means I wanted something lighter, in dark situations so that I didn't have to adjust levels in Movie Studio after I've recorded a nighttime scene. I've gone ahead and disabled the contrast adaptive sharpening, since it does give me a bit of a performance hit, but I'm leaving in the ambient light and LUT. 
which stands for lookup table, as it turns out, and is responsible for most of the color grading going on. Now, I could lighten or at least decontrast the image with levels or curves, but that would also blast the daytime brightness and make things seem a bit grayed out and muddy. What I've done instead is opted to include eye adaptation. What this does is adapt the screen brightness to whatever you're looking at. You can tinker around with these settings to see what they do for yourself, but in general the sliders have mouse over labels that are pretty clear. It should be noted that the brightening settings will work in darker times and places, while the darkening settings will work for brighter times and places. I've basically turned off darkening since YouTube compression will make things darker anyway, but here you can also see my brightening settings. I've mostly focused on brightening the midtones, but kept the highlights and shadows dark. I also have Adaptation Equilibrium turned down to zero. This cuts down on how drastic the change in adaptation is. Mostly. The side effect is that menus and loading screens sometimes look a little bit blown out and janky, but for the rest of the game looking this nice, I'll take it. Another option you can play around with, if for instance you don't like how saturated things are, is the Vibrance plugin. You can also use this to boost the saturation if you want to have a much more fantasy looking game. I prefer leaving it off. My overarching goal is always to make Skyrim look at least a little bit like Subalpine Colorado, and since my next story takes place in the spring, I'm alright with it looking a bit warmer and dustier than a cold, deep winter. Something that you'll want to be aware of if you're planning to take screenshots with Reshade is that it has its own screenshot function and will make duplicate screenshots if you have it mapped to the same key as Skyrim's default, which is print screen. In the settings tab, I've remapped mine to be F12 since it's currently not bound to anything in Fraps or Skyrim. The reason this duplication is an issue, as far as I can tell anyway, is that since Reshade is a post-processing injector, Skyrim on its own won't see any of Reshade's effects when it goes to take a screenshot, so it'll use the default lighting, color grading, and whatever else Reshade is handling. Having these duplications is kind of cool if you want to post before and after shots, but is otherwise kind of a pain for storage and organization reasons. And that's about it! Now you know how to install Reshade, tinker with it, and get your game looking as warm and dusty as mine does. As always, your mileage may vary, and if you're wondering what other mods I'm running that are making my game look like this, stay tuned for a new mod list video. See you next time.